Right now, I am in Japan. A large black man is wandering the streets of Nippon. So I will not be on the up and up for recent content and news. However, we're finishing up this series in the meantime, since it's something that did start early in the year. <laughs> I didn't finish it, didn't commit to it at all. I figured, you know, okay, let's just commit to it now while I'm perusing the streets of Tokyo. And of course, it's about one of my favorite dynamics in the story of One Piece, if not the number one dynamic in the story of One Piece, the Monster Trio. That's Luffy, that's Zoro, and that's Sanji. And I love this dynamic so much with these three goons that I even did a power scaling chart last year in December, breaking down where I thought they lied to each other in certain categories of combat. Now, as of now, I've already done videos on their defense and their offense. And now I'm gonna dive into their skill and their range when it comes to their combat ability. I decided to combine these two because honestly, F it, why not? This is my video, you're in my world, so you just gotta deal with it. Yeah, okay, cool. And for accuracy's sake, when it comes to power scaling in general, and this applies for this video too, I lead First and foremost with what? The manga. I lead first and foremost with the predominant canon material of the story. Now, since December of last year, 2023, when I first made this chart, have there been any changes since then when it comes to skill and range? Yes, there has been. And it's only for range. I have now risen Luffy from a nine to a 10. I've dropped Zoro down from a 10 to a nine and I dropped Sanji down from a three to a two. And if you've noticed over the course of these videos so far, even this video, <laughs> more often than not, I tend to raise Luffy more and more and more because I really do believe that the gap between Luffy and his best men, Zoro and Sanji, is getting wider and wider and wider. I believe that honestly, Luffy is outclassing them in spades. And since we're only tweaking range, let's dive into that category. So now with all the adjustments, I have Luffy at a 10, I have Zoro at a nine, and I have Sanji at a two. I think it's pretty obvious that Sanji is outclassed in the range category by Zoro and Luffy, that is undeniable. But Sanji is not a one. That's actually false advertisement because Sanji does have genuinely some mid range skills. It is rare that Oda does show this. Actually, probably Oda forgot because the guy has admitted that when he does his research on certain attacks for One Piece, he has to go back to his own manga or other sites and look at the list of attacks that the characters have. But Sanji does have a mid-range move called, I'm gonna try this, the Pole Afrir Specte. Mm? <laughs> French ears, I apologize. But it's the Frying Pan Spectre. It's what he used against the Horde of Flying Mermen in chapter 635, episode 555. The anime actually makes his attack look like a mid to long range attack. Yeah. And the last time we saw this move in the anime was in episode 1000, the one they made a remake of the first opening, both the updated characters and so on. In that episode, Sanji goes into the air with Skywalk and then he makes a sort of cloud line of fire underneath him. And then he kicks that cloud in a volley and then it's almost like a military style carpet bomb where there are these orbs of fire that just kind of wasteland all these fodder. So if I was going to actually use the anime in earnest, I would actually put Sanji at a three or a four. However, manga for accuracy. Then we lead first and foremost with the primary cannon. And the last time we saw him use that move was in chapter 724 against Don Quixote do Flamingo. Sanji is clearly a distance away from Dofi while he's firing that volley of kicks. And it makes these kicks honestly seemingly stretch like Luffy's ability. I really could justify Sanji being at a three, but I just say two to play it safe. Range is definitely one of Sanji's weakest points when it comes to his combat skill, for sure. But this does not apply, of course, to Raw Nora Zoro. And I even gave Zoro at one point in time last year the same love, even better love than Luffy. I gave him a 10. And the reason why predominantly was because of his flying dragon blaze that he used against Kyle on the rooftop, which I think is Zoro's longest attack in the story. I checked and I couldn't find anything that was longer as far as I recall. So yeah, 
the Flying Dragon Blaze is a very long and powerful attack. And a way we could determine potentially how long that attack could be now is gauging how powerful Zora's become from then to now. And one way we can do that is his improvement in Conqueror's Hockey Infusion, where in chapter 1002, when he does the Flying Dragon Blaze, we do see that aura around Enma, and then Kaido, after the attack, says he does feel the presence of Oden. It's the same thing that we saw on Zoro's Sword Emma before the Dead Man's Game in chapter 1010, where there was aura specifically around Enma, and after the attack, Kaido does mention Conqueror's Hockey. So Zoro was infusing Conqueror's Hockey into Enma, of course, unbeknownst to him, and it's very, very possible that during the Flying Dragon Blaze, he also infused Conqueror's Hockey, again, unbeknownst to him, in that attack. And what's interesting is that in the fight against Robolucci, we can easily surmise that Zoro has gone better because that fight went the distance. But Zoro, at no point in time, as far as we know, mentioned any sort of stress, any sort of fear with using king of hell even though at some point in time during that fight we see clearly he does use the king of hell technique transformation whatever so since zoro's conqueror's hockey infusion has gotten better more refined he can last longer in that form compared to let's say when he fought against king the wildfire we can assume this flying dragon blaze would be longer compared to when he first did it in chapter 1002 in that very same chapter what you notice is that when the horn gets lobbed off the sort of slash cut actually goes past the horn. So you can argue it's very possible that Zoro now could go coast to coast. He could go horn to horn when it comes to the range of his flying dragon blades. However, even if we go that far, it's still ultimately just what? The width of Luffy's Bajran gun. And just like with Zoro and Sanji and so on, you could argue over the course of time, because he's gotten stronger, his Bajran gun is probably bigger too. So even if I do power creep Zoro, I also have to be fair and power creep Luffy. Recently, in chapter 1106, we did see Luffy punch Kizaru from a distance when he was somewhere in the city below and Kizaru was somewhere on high, but he gets slammed, he gets devastated. Jose Aldo Jr. Just, oh, he gets destroyed by Luffy from definitely Call of Duty sniper range, Barrett 50 cal range. But even still, compared to the Bajran gun in terms of size, that's nothing. And when he's in gear for Snake Man or Bow Man, his covering moves do tend to bounce around for quite a distance. Doflamingo would know, but the exact distance, it's almost impossible to gauge, so I wouldn't even try it. But then even compared to all of that, Oda did something stupid. I don't think Oda had a good sense of it and even trolled about it where he measured it in gumu gumus, like the length of Luffy stretching is based on gumu gumu. So obviously he just had, he was just like, whatever, it looks cool. But Wapo people, Drum Island, hello? Gumu 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 gumu. Remember how long he stretched for that gum gum bazooka before he sent Wapo into orbit? No. No, 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 no. In chapter 151, it's an absurdly long stretch. And now we know. Oh, God. This is why sometimes One Piece scale. Actually, no, not sometimes. On a regular basis, One Piece scaling gives me a headache. We now know that Zunisha's size its full height is comparable to one of those peaks on drum island so if we take luffy stretch his gamu 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 he would literally stretch all the way past zunisha and just rocket himself up to the top of zunisha Zunisha, I think it's too small. I think he's too small. But we have to adapt to new formation, and that's what we have so far. And based on just that and that alone, honestly, Zoro should be a six, and Sanji should be a one, because Luffy's searching game back then was ungodly. But there is, I would say, a caveat that where after that, he hasn't stretched that long. You can argue up until Gear 5. We're saying Gear 5 in episode 1074. This man grab the Onigashima horn as like a slingshot while fighting against Kaido. Though, to be frank, that's just the animators cooking massively hard. But all in all, in terms of range, again, I'm giving Zoro a nine, 
You can argue should be an eight, but I will give Zoro the benefit of the doubt here. But Luffy should still be ahead of Zoro in range. And that's what I thought after reviewing what Zoro has done than what Luffy's done in terms of range capabilities. However, even though range changed, skill stayed the same. For skill, I have Luffy at a seven, I have Zoro at a 10, and I have Sanji at eight. I believe that Zoro is the pinnacle of skill amongst the monster trio. He's the best. And this is less obvious, less mathematical, and as one of the more subjective categories, meaning it depends on how you view the characters in terms of combat skills. I think that in skill, Zoro beats out Sanji and Luffy because Zoro has been training most of his life in the Shimotsuki style of swordsmanship that is very similar to Ryoma style of swordsmanship. We found that out in Wano Country, where Kamatsu and Hyogoro said in chapter 1023 that Zoro's sword style is very similar to that of Shimotsuki Ushimaru, and Ushimaru is a descendant of Ryoma the Sword God, which means at a baseline for most of his life, Zoro is training on one of the most skillful sword techniques that exists in the planet's history, the Shimotsuki swordsmanship. When we find out Mihawk's bounty uh, in the Cross Guild, a very important note is that Mihawk has the greatest sword skill. And this degree of swordsmanship and sword skill is quintessential to Zoro's character since he aims to be the greatest swordsman, the strongest swordsman in the story. The person who is the strongest swordsman in the One Piece story is the person that has the greatest sword skill. Someone like King the Wildfire has arm and hockey on his blade, has a trick sword, a Lunarian body and so on, but even Zoro during Wano Country said, you never said, King the Wildfire, that you're a swordsman. Swordsmen and swordsmanship, therefore their sword skills are quintessential in many respects. And if Zoro is not the pinnacle of skill amongst the monster trio, not the entire crew, then to me, it does feel very strange because again, it's synonymous with his goals and ambitions. So. In terms of themes, I think Zoro has to be no more than skill. But we can also look at this from the perspective of the on the ground test, the eye test, as they call them in basketball. There are things that Luffy and Sanji have in terms of their skill, but Sanji more so than Luffy. Why is that? Because Sanji is a Kenpo practitioner. That's very important here, okay? Luffy has never formally trained at all in any martial arts style. He did copy the six powers shave, the Soto ability, when he was going to gear two against Bluno. True, he was training most of his life in the wilds of the Goa Kingdom. Garp, though frustratingly, was also tutoring Luffy here and there, obviously. Luffy even got trained by Rayleigh to learn Armit Hockey, Conqueror's Hockey, and the Observation Hockey for two years, true. And it's after the time skip where you really see Luffy get more refined as a fighter, where you do see in obvious ways how he's able to better utilize his devil fruit powers. He has natural gifts. He's very smart on the fly when it comes to battle, for sure. Luffy has used his powers in very unique ways, of course. But Sanji not only was doing German training when he was a young kid from birth to like 10, but then afterwards for another decade, was under the tutelage of Red Leg Zeph, who is a practitioner of the Red Leg martial arts style. If you want to see a really, really good showcase of Sanji's skills on display, look at how he fights Bone Clay. The way Sanji's able to counter and finesse Bone Clay with his fancy footwork, matching other fancy footwork in real time is immaculate. Sanji's martial arts, his Kenpo, is fancy footwork that is extremely agile based on capoeira, based on some parts of karate, of Muay Thai, Taekwondo, and other various footworks for other martial arts. And then it combines into one to the point where Sanji can be so precise, so accurate, so lethal, he can literally rearrange the bone structure of someone's face like Duval. And Sanji, like Luffy, has also incorporated a martial arts of the six powers. He's incorporated Geppo, Moonwalk, into its own version, Skywalk. And Sanji is so proficient and so skilled at using Skywalk that it actually acts like a version of Shave. It acts like a version of Soru, but it's for Skywalk. It's almost like his own spin on it, just how Rob Lucci took Shave and combined that with Moonwalk to make Razor. Where he can move now so fast, he's invisible. Shave has nothing on what Sanji's doing in terms of speed and skill. And there's also the fact that when Sanji's fighting, 
particular opponents that are food oriented, if he has his kitchen knives, he uses knives in fights as well. We saw that with Wanze. And how does he beat Wanze too? He beats Wanze using a move that we haven't seen in a long time, but the San Ten Decoupage, where he does three simultaneous kicks targeting certain parts of the body with, again, deadly accuracy and precision. Sanji is a more skilled combatant than Luffy. Not to say that Luffy isn't skilled, but he's not as skilled as Sanji, who was formerly trained in martial arts techniques and has elevated that to a whole new level with other martial arts techniques, even incorporating some new comma stuff with Ivankov with the Spectrum Attack. And you have to remember that Sanji is this skilled, he is this precise and this deadly with the insane martial arts style, while constantly nerfing himself, refusing to use his hands. The dude is extra bottom heavy, no ditty. The fact of the matter is that Sanji has to overcompensate for his lack of upper body abilities with an insane metric of lower body finesse that can only be matched by Shinraku Sakabe in Fire Force and Hitmonlee. Zoro has everything that Luffy and Sanji has in terms of skill, but doesn't need all of his swords to do it. In fact, sometimes he has no sword and he can still do various techniques. So he has the no sword style, the Mutoryu. He has the one sword style. He has the two sword style. He has the three sword style. Then he has the nine sword style. Huh? Zoro has so many different maneuvers and techniques, it's kind of nauseating. It really is. And depending on the situation, he will either go for the one sword style, the two sword style, or the three sword style. Like for example, when he was falling down Onigashima in chapter 1027, when he was fighting against King the Wildfire, he used this two sword style move called the Clear Lance, which allowed him to almost slam the air like a skywalk, where he actually has now better mobility because of his sword skill. Uh-huh. His three sword style and his no sword style, he can do tornadoes, though albeit they're way more powerful with a three sword style, obviously, because his best skills are in three sword style. We've seen him before take his air cuts with a Shusui, where the air cut of Shusui was combining the other air cuts of Waruchi Monji and Sonic Katetsu into one big slash. When it comes to his q you nine sword style stuff, if you only had two swords, he would then go into six sword style. If he had only one sword, but then chose to go into q you he could do his three sword style stuff, because he has three swords when he has Ashra on with only one sword. You see what I'm saying? Zoro, in terms of skill, is off the charts. And that's on top of, let's say, being able to do things like cut through nothing at the same time cut through everything be able to like regulate his hockey to where he's cutting through what he wants to cut through if he can uh, obviously zoro has the firefox style which allows him to cut skillfully through fire and snuff out fire so no matter how you slice it no pun intended but no matter how you slice it zoro in terms of skill i think he has to be the number one like no matter what among the monster trio he has to be the numero uno. Not only is it practically, I think, makes the most sense, but also thematically, it makes the most sense too. So in skill terms, I do give, again, Zoro that flat out 10, Sanji is an eight, he's eight, he's great. And then I give Luffy a seven, he's good too, obviously. So this is my video comparing Luffy, Zoro, and Sanji in terms of categories of range and skill. So let me know your stance on the subject matter at hand. If you enjoy your boy's video content, make sure to give it a thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, and click on that bell to join the notification squad. I'm going to catch you guys and gals on the flip side. See you. Bye-bye.